Yeah, so this is a video from the yurt and I'd like to talk a little bit about the conflict uh, in the Ukraine and how we are dealing with it. Um, first of all, I believe that we all understand that it's good to be good. I also believe that most of us really would love to have world peace. Um, however, I also see that a lot of us slipped into situations or were brought into situations where things de developed in a way that we end up um, as victims or, uh, how do you call it? Well, in any case, a victim of violence, either if we receive it or cause it. Um, makes us victims uh, either way, I guess. And when I look at the situation now in Ukraine, um, again, we somehow seem to see two sides. Everybody is taking a side. Uh, we are talking about who is taking what side in this conflict and um, how to deal with it. How do we get out of the... Um, I don't know, how do we stop buying fossils from Russia to stop this war? Um, what kind of sanctions can we put onto the Russian people or the Russian oligarchs? And before I go into like kind of a proposal of what I think we should do, I want to say that I believe that whatever we do, we will never get peace if we don't forgive. The spiral of hate and um, fear and revenge and violence, it will always continue um, until at some point nobody remembers where it started. And I mean, we have really long, really old conflicts in this world where there's all kinds of like blame game who started it, but um, everybody is sure that it was the other one. So the only way out of this is to forgive. And that's, of course, a lot to ask uh, when we look at massacres and when we look at um, violence towards um, innocent people and victims otherwise and all the suffering. So I think that's a lot to ask. It's still this unconditional love and understanding that ultimately this is what nobody wants, this war. Uh, is, I think, the only way we can somehow get out of it. And that means also opening narratives to the opponents that we can get out of this without losing our face. So instead of um, looking into all kinds of punishments and uh, sanctions, um, I'm thinking that it might be even good to, to offer possibilities um, to say, um, yeah, I made a mistake. I, I, I really made a mistake and uh, I repair and want to somehow make it good again. Um, but this option is somehow not on the table. What also doesn't seem to be on the table, and I find that like um, a lot more uh, disturbing, is scenarios for ending this war or kind of the exit scenarios. Um, I've read from a couple of different peace and safety institutes um, and experts, um, all kinds of suggestions or estimates how this war could possibly end and different scenarios were played through. One scenario that I never see anywhere um, and I also don't see on the negotiation tables is to take all this to the next level and bigger picture. Um, I'm thinking that if we would have um, an alien attack to our planet, a very hypothetical alien attack to our planet, and we would see that we need to combine our forces to deal with this, pretty likely we would be able to stop fighting war about something that we know, well, it doesn't matter anyway. And our situation is very similar. It doesn't matter, like it doesn't help. We cannot... Um, you know, what does it help to fight a war uh, on a sinking ship? So we clearly need to combine our efforts. We clearly cannot afford, nor can we justify,
to use resources, time, lives, and energy to to fight conflict over man-made variety of man-made borders. And I see that what we really, really need to do is to focus on the common ground where our negotiation table is standing on, the common ground under our feet. So I think this as a scenario to ask from any country in the world who is asking Putin to stop this war, and most of the countries in the world do this, I think the argument should not be, beca not because it's not right from our human perspective, um, because apparently there are different opinions on if this war is right or not. Um, it's not right to fight this war because we cannot afford the use of resources. We have better things to do, much, much more important things to do, things that matter a lot more. And um, what we need to do is we need to focus all our attention to serve the well-being of life in all its diversity. Because human life is only possible because of life in all its diversity. So our purpose must be life in all its diversity. And that must mean to stop all kinds of things that we are used to do, including fighting conflicts or building new cars or flying for a holiday or all kinds of things. Um, this is not giving up anything. This is embracing um, a slight possibility of survival. And it's embracing a feeling of being good and being one. And I would love to see this because I believe that as long as, for example, you, Mr. Putin, remember that you were born naked by chance in a place called Russia by one species, um, that also you depend on life and all its diversity. So this is not even about the question, do we believe if the Earth is flat or round, or if, it, if there's climate change or not, or if there's COVID or not. This is really about understanding our six survival priorities. Again, I recommend the stop tool, full moon, full stop, link in the description or somewhere on my channel. No, just search my channel, you will find tutorials there. So um, I believe there is very, very big arguments to not have this war that we are not looking in, into, that we are not talking about. And I don't know why. Um, maybe we should wish you all a good time. Take good care. Bye-bye.